What's that smoke? Is that is that sage? Is that it's a, uh, no? It, it's actually a cigarette. Would you prefer that I not oh, smoke? Oh, oh, please. What is this secondhand uh, Zoom smoke? I think we're yeah, uh, right. I think we're all right. I think we're all right. Uh, how are you doing, Jordan? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good, good. No, you know, you just never know nowadays. Some people have incense. Some people have sage. Yeah. You I'm know, a big incense guy too. Big incense Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so why do you smoke, Jordan? I, I used to be a smoker. I used to uh, like my camels. So I'm a big camel guy. Um, normally I smoke camels. Uh, camel red. I don't know if you've seen the camel with a K. Uh, those are my go-to, but I actually just got back from Palm Springs, California. I was on a little writing retreat and uh, I was at a casino and all they had were Marlboros. So nice. today I'm a Marlboro smoker. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Marlboro yeah. red? Uh, no, it's actually a Marlboro gold. All they had was silver or gold. So Unbelievable. So Jordan, what do you, um, you know, you're from Nashville. You live in Nashville, right? Yeah, I've lived here for eight years. I'm from Southern California. From Southern California. Okay, so what, obviously this is a songwriter's town, right? Like a song is yes. every city. Yes. What can you learn? And I'm sorry if this is a, a silly question, but we, you know, we oh, sure. love learning this stuff. What, yeah. what songwriting skills do you learn in a songwriting retreat in California that you're not able to get here in Nashville? Well, so a retreat for me means I go by myself. I retreat to a place where I can be by myself for a week or for however the amount of time I have available to me at the time. So I was just there. Uh, I have a condo there in Palm Springs and I was able to just have a guitar and I saw three people while I was there. I was there for seven days and I spent the rest of the time just sitting at the guitar and uh, walking around Palm Springs and kind of just soaking in the vibes. That's equally okay. important as to writing it's to kind of kind of get some influence however you can absolutely i love that sure. jordan so yeah. so you know so again you know glad we're talking because you've created something with uh with blue room movie club that is uh, exceptional quality i have to tell you jordan sure. well, thank and, you very you know, much and what amazes me uh jordan is how much good music you've released just in like two three years since 2019 yeah so i actually i was a sports kid growing up i didn't uh, music was not on my radar until I turned 17. And the reason it hit my radar is because I hurt my collarbone a few times and I could no longer play hockey. That was my goal is to play college hockey. And really, who knows what would happen after that. Yeah. And my brother, Blake Miller, uh, he has a band called Bradley Fast Hand that we used to perform with in California. And when I was 17, I didn't play any instruments. Uh, my brother knew I was a fan of what he was doing and he was looking for a drummer and he kind of had a bunch of people that were flaky, just weren't working out. So he's like, you like this stuff? Uh, what if I taught you how to play some instruments and you could be a part of it? And nice. That's really that's really how it started. And I was kind of, I was looking for something to cling on to because sports, it was no longer an option. You know, sports is one of right. those things where if you're not there by 17, you're washed up. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. so there, there was definitely something that was attractive to me about the idea that I could just keep learning and, you know, I could put out something. Maybe I wouldn't put out something until I was, you know, 40, 50. I didn't know when. I just hope that I'd be working towards something that I'd be comfortable uh, releasing. And that finally happened when I moved to Nashville. Uh, my brother was in California still at the time. And I obviously couldn't sit here and play drums and release a drum record. So I had to buy a guitar and start learning how to play. And uh, I would say the first song that I wrote was probably in 2015. 2015. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, before late, that. Late bloomer, quote unquote. Yeah, oh, totally. I mean still i still find myself I, I learned so much every single time i work on something new or release yeah. something new and sometimes you you do stuff that you're even surprised at yourself and that's just a part but, of you know jordan it, is it almost like an advantage because i i, I mean let, let me just like you know play let, 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 let me play my audience like just like a snippet of what i'm talking about because it's just like sure. i mean this is california summer yep. just beautiful stuff i mean you listen to yeah. something like this I mean, it's just, it's just mesmerizing stuff, man. And like, there's so, Thank there's you. so much, absolutely. And play ghosts, like there's so much. Is it almost like, was it almost like a blessing in a way that you got to, the fact that you started late was like, maybe you got to absorb all these influences, all this, all sure. this knowledge, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd say about the same time that I was done playing sports, you know, this is probably 2012 or so once that was over and I started hanging out with my brother more and we honestly it's kind of funny we've been brothers forever but we became best friends you know when I was 16 17 and he showed me you know Arcade Fire, Sufjan Stevens, mm. uh, Fleet Foxes 
Death Cab for Cutie. He showed me all of these different things that I then started listening to. And yeah, uh, that, that stuff, I mean, it, it's all just, it's so good. It, it, it makes you want to definitely do something like it. You know, it makes you want to, it inspires you to create. I agree. I agree. I mean, Arcade Fire, like you listen to Funeral, which I'm sure you you, you heard, yeah. like that'll make you want to rock out. Absolutely. And Oh, yeah. absolutely. And I mean, like Suburbs, when that record came out, that was when Suburbs. I was really, that, that was the first summer that I was playing music. It was the first time that I heard Suburbs had just come out. And I, I tell you, I still hear some of those songs, especially the Suburbs, the opening track. And it takes me right back to the to that place of being yeah. you know, a, a new drummer, not knowing what the hell Absolutely. I was doing. <laughs> Absolutely. What's that song from that record that always gets me? Mountains Beyond Mountains, Sprawl 2. Oh, yeah. That one yeah. just Sprawl gets to my is core. The, best. Um, yeah, the, the, the female vocalist there, she is, she's incredible. And Brilliant. all of her songs are our thumbs up you know they're great absolutely so absolutely jordan so 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 let so let me start with this right so like um so how do you keep yourself so prolific since 2019 i mean you said you mm -hmm. started 2015 late but yeah. like it seems like you're just releasing stuff after stuff every six months and really high quality like what's like your inspirational like well-being like how do you how do you keep yourself like going like this well what i did is i had a studio experience i mean a, sometimes you go into a, a big studio setting and you're not ready for it you know like it's it's too intimidating there's a lot going on i had an opportunity to record at a place called the butcher shop which is in town right and uh, i went there and it was i just had demos i mean i'm i'd only been playing guitar for you know a year and i had california summers was one of the demos right blood moon was one of the demos um and i went in there and i went to record them and it was a case of I kind of have an idea of what I want to do and not to say that I don't want to work with other producers because I would love to work with someone that I can get with and they bring out better parts of me like that. That's totally something that I want to do and that I am uh, looking forward to eventually doing. But in this case, I went there and it was someone who didn't seem to quite understand the material. And we went and we did a session with session players and the whole time as it was going, I was just like, this is not, this is not what I want to do. So leaving that experience, I walked away. I never released that stuff. I decided, you know what, like, I want to do this on my own. I want to figure out how I can do this on my own, where I can be most comfortable, where I can bring out the best of what I want to do. I mean, I was there and there was not only an engineer and a producer, but there was like 10 other people just sitting in the room. It was like, ugh. so after that experience, I kind of took a break. I reevaluated. I spent two years of saving a lot of money and uh, pretty much putting every penny I made into designing and building my own studio on my property. And so cool. I live in East Nashville and I built a two level studio on my property. I designed it with a buddy of mine who's in town. He's a creative director, his name is Luke Reynolds. Um, yeah. We designed it and from there, I was just able to sit with myself. And you know, through that, you just, you know, there, there's no one telling you something, you just kind of keep rolling. You, It's like a snowball that keeps rolling downhill. When you're by yourself, there's no one else stopping that thing from rolling. You just right. keep going. And, just keep going. Yeah, and it, it was really just a matter of, I, I did a lot of recording. Uh, I released some stuff in 2017. Uh, I just put it on Bandcamp. It was when I was new. I wasn't too confident in it. And then probably around 18 is when I had the studio set up to where I was like, yeah, this is as good as the sound is going to be. I'm ready to go. Here we go. And I did themes, which themes is kind of, is the EP that is all of my first stuff, all of my demos, everything I'd worked on from 2015 to that point. Right. Uh, and then once once I finished that record uh, and listened to it, obviously it didn't get you know uh, a ton of popularity. I didn't get a ton of followers as a result. But I listening to it, I I felt the confidence of I'm doing something right. So yeah. I'm going to keep going. And and once you have that confidence, it, it just keeps going. And I agree. Once you have pretty much yourself. Yeah, once, sure. I finish, once I finished themes, I felt a, a real boost, a real sense of confidence, and I rolled right into, I did a couple singles. I did uh, Waiting, which was one, and then I did uh, a cover of a Towns Van Zandt song called Be Here to Love Me. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, I mean, it's just, it just kind of, it's just kind yeah, of kept going. rolling. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and um, Ghosts, like for example, that, mm -hmm. one, that one is also great. W which yeah, album yeah. is that one on, Jordan, again? So actually, there's a song ghosts. on themes called, there's a, there's a song on themes called There Are Ghosts in This Place. And that's actually, the, it has the same lyrics as Ghosts, which is on Beyond Life and Death, which is the one that really? came out in 2020. Oh, it's yeah. And dude, so I mean, good. I tell you, Listen for to this. years. Let me just play this to my audience, because this is like phenomenal stuff, like just a little bit. Sure. I mean, 
I mean, Jordan, that's just great stuff, man. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyway, so sorry about that. Just got, got to uh, throw it out to the to my audience a little bit there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, and it's one of those cases where that song has lived many, many, many different lives. I, I have probably three different progressions that I played around with before I recorded There Are Ghosts in This Place on themes. And then when I got to Beyond Life and Death, um, I didn't plan on having a, uh, a record that was so heavily leaning on a theme, one theme, which is religion, which is what happens after we die, I don't know. No one really knows for sure. And ghosts just happened to fit into the, the theme that seemed to be being built on Beyond Life and Death. So I, I had had that same progression that I'd played with it before. And I was like, you know, I think that this thing is better served on this record. And I think it's better served this way. Um, yeah, and it just, it just kind of all came together. Just fascinating stuff, Jordan. Oh, Let you. me ask you a couple of questions. You mentioned you lived in, in East Nashville. I mean, mm -hmm. we're pretty new to Nashville. We've been here almost three months. Uh, love it. Love the community. And Welcome. Thank you. And the day we're taping this um, is the anniversary of the tornadoes that ripped yeah. through East Nashville. Yes. So it would be reminiscent of me not to ask you um, sure. about this day last year. Like, were you in town? Yeah. What was your experience like? So I was in town and I remember, I remember just the, at some point before I went to bed, probably 11 p.m., 10, 11 p.m., feeling the pressure change. And I've been in Nashville enough to where I'm used to, there's been mild tornadoes, there's been things that really weren't too consequential. But this night, I'll tell you, I went outside to have a smoke and you could feel, you could feel it in the air that something, something was happening. And uh, I ended up going to bed. But I have a buddy who, uh, my, my very best friend, um, who works at a place or worked at a place called Attaboy. And I woke up to a text from him asking if I was okay. And then at that point I was like, oh my God, like what's happening? And I woke up, you know, wiped the sleep out of my eyes, looked on Instagram, saw everything that was going on. It was so close to me. I mean, just a couple of miles. But okay. luckily, I mean, I'm very fortunate that I was not really affected at all. But there are so many people that are close to me that, you know, I people who lost friends in this, you know, there was only a couple of people who uh, didn't make it in Nashville. And I know some people who are close with them and it's just devastating, man. I mean, even if it doesn't affect you directly, you, you go to work that next day and you're driving and you can't go the same way. And you realize, Oh my yeah. God, like you this, this whole town. Stuff, yeah. yeah. This whole town. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was crazy. And uh, again, I'm very fortunate that I was not affected, but you know, so many people that are important to me were, and it, it, it was a very tough thing and it still is when I think I, I thought about it this morning and I thought about it first when I saw your post yesterday mm. and when you think about it again even though it didn't directly affect me it it, it makes you emotional you know it's it's very something that yeah. it's yeah it's 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 crazy and you know um it's great to see how quickly I mean and like you said there's still parts of town that are absolutely kind of where they were left after that night but for the most part you see how people just came together I mean I'll, I'll tell you what like people that had nothing to do with it were nowhere near it. They were coming to East Nashville. They were coming to help. They were coming to fix things. Uh, it was, it's, it's that sort of thing that, you know, the Nashville strong is something that was said long before yeah. this happened, but that kind of, you know, proves that there's a reason why people uh, yeah. talk about Nashville that way for sure. I, I th again. Yeah. I think, you know, as a newbie, I think what I, what I gather is everyone feels connected here and that's not the case in many cities. I, I think LA oh, like sure. that Miami is certainly not like that, which is, you know, it's like if something happens it, here, it feels like we're all in everything together. Like people are yeah. in the ups and the downs, you know? Yeah, I, I, I would definitely say so, especially in a community like East Nashville. I mean, obviously when you get to the city, the center of the city, there's always politics. There's always BS that comes along with all of that. But <laughs> yeah. in, in these small communities, you see more of when people really stand up and start uh, helping each other out, looking out for each other. Absolutely. Absolutely, Jordan. No, so, I mean, we're, we're learning so much about you and, and it's great. I do want to ask you, um, you know, it's come to our attention that you're like a, you're very, very, you're an expert. You're a knowledgeable, knowledgeable expert on uh, Patsy Klein and Johnny Cash. So I wanted to ask yep. you, what have you learned from just like, from knowing so much about them? Yeah. That, that like you've taken to your own artistry, you know, from these two icons. Well, you know, it, it, it's kind of crazy that I never, when I started writing music, obviously Johnny Cash was my godfather. Um, my dad was very close friends with him. We opened the Johnny Cash Museum. So there's like a relationship there, but I never felt, uh, I never felt 
that influence while I was writing. I always had other influences or other inspirations in mind, but when I really look at the body of work, especially my early stuff like Blood Moon, they're, they're ballads. They're two chord ballads that are going back and forth. There's verse first, then it goes into something. And But they're they're very much structured the way that Johnny Cash, I mean, it was the same chords over and over, repetitive. And that's how a lot of the early stuff was for me. So I think that it kind of had an inspiration that I didn't even realize while I was doing it, but it kind of informed the structure and I guess the the ballad type approach to some of the early stuff for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. And Patsy Klein is someone that I'm still learning very much about. Um, you know, obviously such a short career. There's there's such a short period of time where she was she rose to the top, and then unfortunately, you know, there was the accident. Oh, and right. It's horrible. So who knows what she would have done beyond then? But I guess with two people like that, there are people who just were unflinchingly who they were. They yeah. did what they did. They were themselves. And if, if there's anything that I'd take away from someone like Johnny Cash, it's the fact that you got to be true to yourself, you know, uh, and this is not a Johnny Cash quote. This is a Martin Scorsese quote, the filmmaker. It's uh, the most creative is most personal. So because no one else can tell your story. So right. your story is very creative in the fact that no one else has experienced what you've experienced. So by you telling that story, it's creative on a level that other people can't do simply because they did not experience it. So that I would, I would say the thing I took most from those two icons and especially Johnny would be, be yourself, show your scars, talk about the things that are uncomfortable. I've released a couple songs that when I listen to them, uh, they're very true, but they're, they're, they're tough. They're even tough for me to listen to because there's so much truth behind them. Uh, but that's the way you got to do it or, or people aren't going to connect to it as being a, you know, a, a, a truly a new thing, something, something exciting, but also something that I, I hope that everything I write, no matter how personal it is, is spoken in a way that other people can pinpoint a point in their life where they felt the same way, even if it was about a different situation, not about a same type of relationship, but they can kind of take it and make it their own. That should be, to me, the goal of, that's why you don't just play it for yourself. You play it for other people because you hope that they can connect in, in a similar way, I guess amazing amazing that's you know that's why your music is so good jordan you just have your eyes are, is not on the hit you're on the quality and like you're getting it from all these things and it it shows it's awesome yeah. well thank you very much i appreciate that absolutely jordan uh why the name uh blue blue room movie club jordan so uh i have aspirations beyond music i mean music is something i do because i love it and i'm for whatever reason it's something i'm able to do it it, it came relatively natural again we know it took a few years before i i put something out but it is it's something that is kind of now a part of my rhythm of living you know you just do it it's yeah. something that goes along but my made my major passion is i would love to make film uh, that, that's mm -hmm. my goal i'd love to do stuff in film and a film idea i had uh was called blue room movie club and when i decided to do music it was after i already had this blue room movie club idea i knew that i didn't want to i've always been a fan of bands you know the idea of a band, guys getting together, they all do stuff together, it's great. So even though I didn't have a band, I wanted to treat this project as a band. I don't want the spotlight to always necessarily be on, this is about this person, this is about him, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. I didn't want it to be a Jordan Miller record. I wanted it to be a, at least something that seemed more like a, a collective thing. And that was always with the goal of, I, and I still have the goal of eventually putting together a band. Uh, but the thing that's different about Nashville than where I grew up and where I grew up playing in bands was out there it was all about just it wasn't about what's going to happen with this song it wasn't about where is this going to go it was about you're with your best friends you're yeah. having the time of your life you're playing rock and roll you're having a good time and yeah. the, I, I guess I kind of romanticized the idea of a band and that's why I released Under Blue and Movie Club even though generally I play most of the instruments on the records um I, I still would love the idea one day of, of having a, a band where here's the guitars, here's the basses, here's the drummer, and that's them all the time. I'm going to come to them with demos and they're going to come with ideas of their own. So that's, that's still something I'd like to do. And hopefully when this all clears up COVID wise and live shows are a thing again, um, I can start building that and, and, and look to do that sort of thing, but it just hasn't been in the cards so far. So Absolutely. still a, a solo project, but, uh, I, 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 it's it's more fun playing under a different name. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm Jordan right. Miller every single day. It's nice to be Blue Room Movie Club, you know, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to immigration officers, you're Jordan Miller, but I got you. I got you, yeah. man, absolutely. Totally. So, um, yeah, I mean, you, you've been so good with your time, Jordan. Just a couple more questions. Uh, looks like 
with COVID, we're kind of turning the corner. I mean, uh, I mean, like Basement East in East Nashville is like opening this weekend. I mean, there's glimmers yeah. of hope. Like the touring industry seems to be like gearing up for September, late August. Like things are happening. Totally. You know, t- tell me, like your music is so arcade fire. Like you Ooh. know, it's like so atmospheric, so beautiful. What kind of like live show like do you envision? Like just, just and you're such a movie guy, so you know, yeah. take us in there. Oh. Totally. So uh, when I when I finished themes, and again the prospects of having a band at that point, it was so that was uh, October or November, really, of 2019 that I released that, and I was starting to think of, okay, like I would like to play shows soon. You know, I I built this record, I'd like to do that. So I started getting into it, and then just as quickly as I was figuring that out and starting to practice with people, uh, you know, potential players, COVID hit, and that just kind of took it off the off the the list of things to do for now at least uh but no to be honest i the reason why i did beyond life and death themes was a very computer record i made so much of that on a laptop you know Hmm. i made so much it's so many layers i mean there's like 150 tracks on some of those songs not to say that they're complex but there's just so many layers of that atmosphere that you talked about that it was it was difficult to imagine how i could pull it off and have it be the way that it sounds on the records live without having a big band. And we have to keep in mind, we're in a town where it's hard to build a band where people are playing to just play and be a part of it. And then once you, once you have success, we all share it. It's kind of a, you got to pay people to even show up to practice. So when I built beyond life and death, I kind of built it with the eye of, I want to play shows as soon as I can. So I I spared it down. I, I decided I only wanted to have a few electric guitar tracks, I was going to have a drum track, a bass track. I always like to have like an ambient delay track that goes along with everything, but still something that could be played with five or six people on a stage and and that it wouldn't sound too different than it sounds on the record. So um, yeah, to me, to me, I think that Beyond Life and Death and the stuff that I'm trying to, to do now comes from a more natural band type place where you can get six people in a room and we can jam it and it sounds at least, you know, close to the record. I love it. I love it, Jordan. Well, it's been so great to talk to you. Uh, why don't you take us home by telling us what songs you're going to, you, you know, you're going to share with us and what's the background on them? Yeah, so I'm going to play a couple songs for you. Um, the second one I'm going to play is called My Boy, which was a single that I released last month. Um, My boy. And that song is, that's a very personal one. It's, it's, it's kind of about uh, being in a new place and being a little bit lost and maybe drinking a little too much and, and going out a little too much and just kind of all the crazy things that come along with, with those sort of nights. You know, I moved to Nashville and I was living downtown and oh, a lot good. of nights, yeah. yeah, a lot of nights were a blur. Simply you wake up. It's and like a siren. You, it's like a siren calling. Yeah, it, exactly. And my boy in that song, <laughs> it, it sounds like it's about something very serious, but it's referring to my cat. I have a Persian cat named Gordy and he was living with me in my apartment. And sometimes I would wake up and be like, I don't remember when I got home and I see my cat there and he's looking at me like, what's going on? Where were you? Or you're here now? Like what's going on? So that song is kind of just about the anxiety of, of waking up and not knowing exactly what happened. Um, and the first song I'm going to play for you, which is a new song I haven't released yet. It's called another night at the cafe. Nice. And there's a cafe called cafe Rose in East Nashville. And I live two blocks away. I walk there. Uh, I go there every single day, at least once a day I, I, I go. Um, and it's kind of just a song about being in a being in a place by yourself, but there's lots of social stuff going on around you, and you can kind of see what's going on and in, in your mind. You kind of, you know, play. It's like a stranger's in the night. Someone walks in. Oh man, she's beautiful. Yeah. But then she walks away, and you never talk to her. It, it, it's kind of just about yeah. things passing someone by as they're just doing their thing. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, Jordan Miller. It's been uh, such such great to connect. I'm so happy that we are uh, sharing the same atmosphere of creativity yeah. because uh, something tells me we'll cross paths soon and uh, a lot of the world will hear you very soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And next time, I hope that things are a little better. You can come by the studio yourself and we can talk in person. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. And by, yeah. by the way, we are, um, you know, we're organized. We're in the nascent stages of a live in-person show to be filmed in Germantown. So, you know, awesome. whenever you feel comfortable and whatever, like we'd love to have you pass by as well. I would love that. Thank you so much, Jamie. All right. Take care, Jordan. Ready? All right, cool. 
Uh, thanks again for having me on, Jamie. Uh, I'm going to play a couple songs for you. This one's called Another Night at the Cafe. Just another night at the cafe Guess I'll have the usual again And think about all the messes that I've made And how I'll do my best to clean them all up again It's just another night at Cafe. I sit across from my one and only friend She always makes sure that I'm never empty And when I am she fills me up me up again It's nights like these I fall in love Someone I'll never see again There's no words exchanged or stairs returned You left sitting broken hearted, feeling spurned In the cut of your hair Made me stare and swear I'm going insane In the blue in your eyes Was of the bluest of skies How could one ever complain Of that view If only you knew How I could love you But you're fading out of view This one is called My Boy. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. I 
eyes Oh no, what did he see? I can feel my mind It's slipping away It's so dark down here these days Don't count on me I'll only let you down I don't know what you have heard around town Don't count on me I'll only let you down I can't begin to take care of myself Let alone care for somebody else